This is Zen from Noble of Scars, and you're listening to Collision on Voice FM. Hello, Zen speaking. Hi, Zen. It's Kat. How are you? Good, thanks, Kat. How are you? I'm good. I don't think we've actually spoken before, have we? No, you've probably spoken to Tim. Yeah. On previous occasions. Yeah, he's a little occupied these days. Yeah, that's okay. I've been looking forward to the opportunity to get to have a chat with you. Yeah, all good. Yeah. So, well, Nia Bliviscaris, like, you guys are pretty amazing as far as a band goes because you had quite a slow start to your career, but everything (laughs) has turned around so amazingly for you. How does it feel these days? Yeah, it's, um, yeah, uh, being slow to start was probably kind of an understatement. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it took nine years for the first album to be released, and um, it's slowly creeping in that we're kind of, things are kind of working out for us. It was, you know, a lot of people kind of, you've heard a few of our albums, and they've only really thought that we've been around for a few years thinking we're relatively new, Mm -hmm. but they have no idea of, you know, the hard years that we've put into what we do, and, you know, we're just as, I guess, just as deserving as any other band kind of at our station we get to you know we're able to travel the world and you know leave australia unfortunately like a lot of australian bands don't get to that stage where they're actually you know able to progress further and for us to do that you know it's really overwhelming you know considering you know you go from a young angsty teenager screaming in your bedroom mm-hmm. and then thinking you know well you know one day am i going to be able to tour the world or you know, play the biggest european festivals across Europe and you know when that happens it's kind of it's really surreal and we're um kind of very appreciative of you know all the fans have kind of supported us the whole way and kind of made this I guess happen for us. Yeah well I think you guys have made it happen too because like you said nine years and you know you you held on you kept getting like I think there was one point where you had to um wait for one of your players to come from France was it? Yeah, he was deported from the country and um, about eight, and uh, he was out of the country, I think, for about 18 months. And so we kind of had to appeal that and argue with immigration. So we won that. Mm. He was able to come back with us. And um, But, you know, we're, you know, every band has their ups and downs, it, but it just feels as though we've had, you know, like a nonstop, you know, um, obstacles to come across. And I think, you know, from that, we've kind of learnt and kind of grown and um, been been able to deal with things a lot more efficiently and you know for me you know I've put that many years into it considering you know I formed the band in 2003 it's just like I'm not going to let you know issues that come up affect what the band in general is going to do because I'll be fucked if someone's going to spoil that for me. (laughs) Yeah well that's just it I think if you really believe in something then other people believe in it too and that's what you guys have done not only that talk about innovators like the Patreon campaign like you guys are getting between nine thousand and eleven thousand dollars a month now from patrons i mean that must feel pretty awesome to suddenly have an income as a band and have the freedom to be able to go overseas and do things like that and record yeah absolutely it's been like the support from that is you know it's been going it's two years now that um that's uh, been going for us and you know it's been consistent and you know gradually growing and it's really overwhelming to see that people have stuck by us and actually believe in what we do and support everything we do you know without that sort of thing you know we wouldn't be able to tour overseas Mm. it's you know because before you leave the country you know with all we're six people in the band before you left the country you know you're you're over 10 grand in debt before you've left Mm. and you know you can't really afford to do that all the time you go away for months at a time and you know you come back and you don't have a day job because mm. no one's going to hire you because you keep going away. And so, you know, we kind of, you know, we want to be doing this as a job, just like anyone else doing their job, Depend, regardless of whether or not people like what they do as a job. You know, for, for us, we're trying to make this a job. Mm. And, you know, I, you know, anyone that loves what they do as a, as a career or a job, you know, good on them. But, you know, we all make our choices in life as to what we want to do. And for us to be able to do this as, you know, it's as a job to kind of, make life a little easier being in a band definitely because it helps us you know focus more on what we're doing uh, more songwriting um we get to interact a lot more with the fans and you know with patreon it's kind of a, a give and take sort of thing so you know you give a little of a lot of sort of behind the scenes stuff that normal fans may not necessarily get you know you have interviews with fans and that sort of thing you know they they're able to, you know, uh, support you doing what you love to do. So it's um, it works both ways. Yeah. Can I ask actually for mm. patrons and people maybe considering becoming patrons, do you guys like you each take a percentage of it as a wage and certain amount of it goes towards recording and things like that? Yeah, Absolutely. We kind of, uh, we try to, because it's, 
no, the band members, we, you know, obviously if you, we can't <laughs> get full-time jobs mm. uh, because of the amount and no one wants to hire you if you're um, going away for a few months. And so, you know, a certain portion may go to the members in the band mm-hmm. and uh, a certain portion goes towards, you know, tours coming up or uh, getting merch produced or anything that helps the band move forward. And so it's kind of spread around. You know, obviously it's, you know, the amount doesn't necessarily cover everyone's incomes that they would have earned mm. working in a full-time job, but it certainly helps and so kind of allows us to do that and other members, you know, to make up for that sort of shortfall and that sort of thing can do other things like they may do tutoring uh, instruments or, you know, for me, I do artwork and photography and that sort of thing to make things work. Right. So it's um, it's an ongoing um, battle, but yeah, it does get, um, I guess, distributed around everywhere. So have you done the artwork for Earn? Yeah, I've, I do all our artwork. Right, pretty amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank <laughs> I you. suppose um, having seen that, that then you are being approached by other bands to do their artwork as well. Yeah, correct. I've been doing artwork for bands uh, for about uh, over ten years now, and so it's you know one of the things I do, and you know, one of the things I understand. Hmm. So it's you know I've always done art my whole life, and so being able to do that and get get paid now and then for certain artwork when I actually have time. You know, it's it's hard trying to organise a lot of that when you're touring a lot, so it's kind of a lot of juggling in life. Well, you're a very, very creative person on a lot of fronts. Okay. I guess the, um, the Patreon thing has, one of the results of that has been the EP. I don't know, it's an EP in the amount of tracks on it, but it's an album in the length of <laughs> of the content earn that you released yeah. last year. And then you had a massive tour of North America and Canada on that as well. Yes. What yeah. was that like? Because how many times have you toured America? Uh, we've done it, I think, three times. We've done two full tours of North America, Canada. Oh. So, um, yeah, we love going over there. They treat us really well. And, you know, we, we originally thought that Europe was going to be our, you know, would be initially the where our biggest fan base would come from. Hmm. But uh, we found that the U.S. is, I guess, a lot more open to us straight away than the rest of the world. For some reason, the U.S. is you know, crazy for this sort of music, so it's really unusual. Um, so we were pleasantly surprised the first time we went over there. And um, the U.S. is, you know, they're really welcoming. They, you know, really supportive of what we do. And you know, a lot of our Patreon people are actually from the U.S. as well. So it's where, you know, well, we're trying to cover every country, but the the U.S. Uh, just uh, seems to be a lot more supportive in general. But um, however, the U.S. is the hardest country to tour you know the drives to each city is longer it's a lot harder in pretty much every aspect so it's you know but we're able to do it quite efficiently now so it's so it should make everywhere else a lot easier well that's good but then speaking of long drives and that i mean <coughs> nothing beats australia for that <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that's yeah australia is pretty brutal um although you know you can only play so many shows within australia because i guess we don't necessarily have the population to support constant touring here yeah um, um, you know, most bands will tour just the major cities, and a lot of the regional shows um, won't happen because you know, and not a lot of people attend. Well, there won't be a great attendance there, and that sort of thing. So, you know, generally you'll do the major cities, and we try to do Perth as much as possible when we tour Australia because we know they get left out a lot, mm-hmm. even with international tours, uh, because it's so expensive for bands to get across there. But um, uh, doing the East Coast is yeah, it's it's pretty brutal in terms of driving, but um, you know we've We've been playing shows in Australia since 2006, so we're used to it. I'm going to put you on the spot here then because you mentioned Perth getting left out a lot. Have you ever played Hobart? We have. (laughs) We have indeed. We've played played Hobart and we've played Launceston. Right. So, um, yeah, um, I think the last time we played uh, Hobart was 2016, actually. Right. Or Launceston, one of them, I can't remember. But, um, yeah, we did play there. But, unfortunately, on this tour, it hasn't worked out that we'd play, be playing there. But, you know, perhaps we were kind of later in the year. We're not entirely sure. But, um, yeah, we do. Hobart does tend to get missed out. Even though it's so close, it's like mm. some people just don't want to make that kind of step across the uh, strait. Yeah. The water barrier. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like so close, yet it's so far. Yeah, exactly. And, well, you guys, yeah. as you mentioned, this tour, you are touring – for Earn in Australia, finally, um, yeah. starting on the 9th of February, and yes. you actually are going to Auckland and Wellington before you come back to Perth as part of the tour. So I guess you've brought the relationship between New Zealand and Australia together into a massive national tour. Yeah, we've um, 
we've always wanted to go to New Zealand and we, you know, there's, we seem to have quite a lot of people from over there kind of sending us messages asking us to come across. And, you know, it's, well, it's probably, it's probably cheaper to go to New Zealand than it is to go to Perth, uh, oddly enough. Yeah. And, you know, my brother actually lives over there. So um, it's a, it's a bonus for me to get across. But, you know, I think, I think New Zealand gets left out a lot and kind of, you know, we've been around for so long and we've never been there as a band. So it's going to be a good opportunity for us. Yeah, awesome. Well, definitely the New Zealand people have to get on that if it's your first time there. I didn't realise that was your first time. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, it's yeah, as we were discussing with uh, Tasmania, it's kind of so close yet so far. It's because before you tour a place, you don't necessarily know what your fan base is going to be like over there. So it's kind of uh, a lot of time. It's kind of a risk mm. when you go to somewhere when you put that effort and cost into going somewhere. It's you know you could potentially lose quite a bit. Yeah, and when you speak of cost, you know what a lot of people might not necessarily consider is it's not just the cost of your tickets, but actually getting your instruments and that over there costs a lot of money. And there's a lot yeah. of risk involved in that, which I think you guys have experienced in Europe before as well. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Like, yeah, we lost so much money the first time, but it's, you know, the first time we went to Europe, we did a whole lot of festivals across Europe. And, you know, it's it's a lot different to doing a club tour, where a club tour, you're playing a show every single day for like a month. Hmm. or so and so you're having some sort of income for the band you're playing shows and you're selling merch and that sort of thing whereas if you do a festival tour you get a set amount paid to you and then there may be a few days in between festivals and whatnot and so within that time you're losing money between Hmm. those festivals because you're paying for food you're paying for accommodation you're paying for travel all within that time and so every day you don't play a show you're Hmm. getting further and further into debt in my memory somewhere i'm remembering something about you guys going to europe and either there being damage to some of your instruments or that they were not on your plane and they came late yeah you know you'll get a lot of uh, musician horror stories um (laughs) from a lot of bands you know one uh one of them we toured asia with uh, flesh hot apocalypse and um, uh, some of the instruments actually were left didn't get on a plane from I think Hong Kong or Singapore or wherever my memory's not great at the moment but and so it was everyone was stressing that equipment wouldn't turn up um, and so it eventually did after us stressing a lot and then kind of going out of their way to make things right in mm-hmm. terms of getting all our equipment on the next plane to turn up and get delivered to our hotel and you know again we had an occasion where our bass player, we went to Spain to play a festival in Spain and our bass player's bass didn't turn up. Mm. And so we couldn't find a bass replacement because he's, he was a left-handed and it was, um, we couldn't ha- find anyone necessarily with a left-handed bass. And so our bass player had to sit out of doing the festival watching from the crowd. Oh, God. That would have been <laughs> hard for him. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was kind of – it was a little surreal having – Seeing your bass player in the crowd watching you perform, it's, yeah, something I don't, it's it's not a good feeling. I suppose he had a few jokes after the gig saying, I hope you're enjoying your yeah. holiday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in, in, in hindsight, in hindsight, you know, you can laugh about that sort of thing, but when it's happening, it's kind of one of the yeah. most stressful things to not have your instruments turn up somewhere. I guess, yeah, at the time it really is, but then later it's like you, you're not a band unless you've got stories like that, really. Yeah, exactly. You know, being in a band is about the journey of the music and, you know, the the brotherhood, I essentially, mm. of being in a band. And making yeah, things and happen. Shows. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, if, if your band doesn't have stories, then it's just like, I don't think you're doing enough. Is there anything that you guys have kind of learnt to do to – insure against those things or is that just something that you just have to accept it's going to happen sometimes it's you're always going to have to accept that things are going to go wrong like we don't we know that when we tour overseas there's always going to be some sort of risk we know that potentially something could go wrong your equipment uh, may get broken in transit or whatever but you know you've got to you know you try to kind of work out what potential problems can happen and kind of do your best to avoid them the future and you know you've just got to be i guess you learn a lot the Mm. more problems come up you learn quicker and you get to you get to be a bit more sort of uh, efficient and and about what you do and it's kind of you know whenever there's a person involved you're always going to have you know the potential for human error Mm. and so you know it's all part of life and being a musician a lot of the time you don't know what to expect Mm. well before we do get onto the tour for earn a little bit more i will ask 
with your travels overseas and what's been happening for you guys the last few years, what's the best memory you have so far? The best memory, I think, is probably playing in India. Well, it's one of the best playing in India. We played a uh, just after Citadel was released. Um, from memory, we played uh, as part of a festival in a place called Guwahati, which is kind of north east India in mm-hmm. Nepal. And um, part of I think the festival was two nights, and the first night we went there and were shown around. And there was like ten thousand people at this festival. And the headliner for that night was this big Bollywood pop star. Mm-hmm. And then. The, the promoter was saying, you know, this is, you know, it's a good crowd tonight, but you'll have more watching you tomorrow night. I was just like, what the hell? And then, so we headlined the second night in India and we uh, got escorted by like a big military sort of escort with machine guns and whatnot to the venue. And, you know, we had all fight, all these, what we heard, thought were gunshots going off around our band change room. And everyone was really concerned, and it turns out, you know, there's huge fireworks just being set off behind our kind of thing, and they were kind of set off during our show and whatnot. And, um, you know, we played to over 12,000 people, and it was such a massive kind of show that, you know, could hear the music bouncing off the mountains behind and kind of hitting you back. It was a really surreal experience, and just everyone there just, I guess, loves music. It was kind of it was a pretty insane crowd. Yeah. And through all this, like you guys are actually still an independent band, aren't you? You don't actually have a label. No, we, we actually do have a label now. We've, our label at the moment is a Season of Mist. Oh, uh, right. Based, yep. Yeah, based in France. So they you know, have bands and they're just like Mayhem and whatnot. So, you know, but we do, you know, we've always been pretty independent in regards to what we do, though, in terms of we like to do a lot of our own promotion and that sort of thing. So that's why it may come across as more independent. Mm-hmm. Like with a lot of bands, you'll see a lot of the time that labels will doing, be doing a lot of stuff for them, mm-hmm. whereas we like to be able to capitalize on that. You know, we've been a pretty independent band from day one doing, you know, constant promotion for ourselves and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, if you know we had the label helping us with certain things and then you know we push ourselves in you know across social media and all other ways by doing it ourselves you know it's it's i guess one of the ways that's kind of working for us and why we've uh, been able to i guess grow quite significantly in a shorter amount of time yeah yeah no and season of mist are quite a big label in europe too yeah. and they've got some pretty awesome metal bands on their label yeah we um our first for pot of eye we released that through um code 666 who are based in italy and um just after we released that um the uh, head of season of mist contacted us asking if um we were actually signed to a label and they wanted to potentially um have pot of eye on their label and then you know we kind of said yeah sorry about that you're gonna have to wait till our next album mm. um and then we can discuss whether you want to sign us then right. and so um we ended up signing to them for citadel so um they've been uh, really supportive of, of us and you know it's one of the labels that i think has a lot of integrity and um, believes in what their artists do because they love all the music that they've got on their roster yeah cool and the the bigger labels and that what they look for is bands who can actually support themselves because bands don't make money from music sales anymore and no, they don't. Not only your touring, but your Patreon thing. I mean, you guys were right to be signed to a label. Yeah, it's because um, the music industry has changed so much over the years, and you know, our label have been really supportive of us um, using Patreon because they know that whatever helps the band mm-hmm. is going to help them as well. Exactly. And yeah. so, you know, they support us as much as they can, and you know, we've never had any complaints or any issues with them and, and they've been fantastic mm. for us. So, um, you know, we're, I guess, a, a really sort of a good working team. Yeah, and I guess it's something other bands should take note of, that labels don't want bands who are going to be complaining that they don't have any money. No, because, you know, the first thing that labels want to hear is that it's quality music and then what are the band doing about it? Are they serious about what they want to do and you know, how much do they promote themselves and how much effort do they put in? It's essentially, you look at a man and you think, how much do they want to be able to do this as mm. a career? And a lot of bands, I think, in Australia saw you do your Patreon thing and mm. kind of think, well, they've done it now, so no other Australian bands can get away with it. But that's just not true. It's not about Patreon or, you know, you being the only band in Australia can do it. It's about your belief in it because, like you said, most of your patrons are actually from overseas 
Yeah, well, that, that's it. I mean, we do have a fair few in Australia, but overseas is quite a lot of them. And, you know, we received a bit of backlash for the Patreon thing. But for me, I don't, you know, it's people that don't necessarily understand the whole concept of it. Hmm. To me, I put that down to ignorance. And, you know, if someone has something negative to say about it, that's fine. I, I mean, I don't really give a shit, to be honest, because it's it's not my issue. It's theirs not understanding something or not wanting to accept that, you know, potentially their band didn't think of doing that beforehand or whatnot because mm. you know it's you know if people want to support something they can if someone doesn't it doesn't matter it's entirely up to the individual but it's you know i don't it's going to be hard for bands in future if they don't think of alternative ways to actually move themselves forward if they want to do it as a full-time career mm. And probably the reason it's working for you so well is because you guys are using it for what it's intended for. You're not just sitting there saying, oh, we've got free money coming in. You're actually working as a band. (laughs) That's exactly right. And we, we, we promise people like, you know, if this happens, then we'll be able to tour the world more often and do all these sorts of things. You know, we're not sitting at home buying shoes and online shopping and that sort of thing. It's not how it is. You know, I haven't bought clothes for such a long time. It's kind of depressing, but you know. We, um, you know, we it's we use it as kind of as smart as we can to move the band forward. Well, we want to run into you in a music shop, not in a jeans shop, anyway. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Who that's needs good. new clothes? I mean, <laughs> no, that's it. That's Until it. the others are falling off you, which I've heard happens to bands halfway through these massive tours overseas. Yeah, they do. <laughs> you know, yeah, you run. You know, you don't get an opportunity to kind of wash your clothes. Because, you know, this... Well, you lose the, so much weight that they just fall off you. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You do lose weight generally on tour mm. as well. So that's something you've got to be conscious of. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's, a, it's an ongoing struggle. Oh, there's, there's a tip for bands who are going for their first big European or American tour, buy some braces to hold your pants up. <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> Absolutely. So then, well, you are going to tour Australia and New Zealand for the album Earn. You have Circles coming along for the entire tour? No, Circles are. They're just doing the Australian shows with us. Okay, great. And well, then the album Earn, well, I've had a listen to it and, you know, all your albums are journeys you got to you know you don't got to but it helps if you can sit and listen to the whole album definitely yeah. what would you want to tell people to get them to go and not only grab the album earn but to come out and see your shows in february yeah well earn is i guess earn is probably a mixture of uh, all the albums that we've done plus a little bit more i guess experimentalization and uh or experimentalism whichever way you want to say <laughs> it. um but you know it's it's all of us, you know, we're all from different backgrounds and it's everyone's sort of personality, I guess, within the sound. And, you know, there's, there's for this album, there was five of us that wrote it and obviously a session bassist played it. But, you know, we put our heart and souls into it and sort of it was, a, it was a, an album that gave us more insight into ourselves because of the hard process that we went through to write. And I think that's um, the songs themselves are kind of translated a lot better live than our the previous material from our other albums. So I think it's definitely something that um, can be appreciated uh, on CD, but also live. Um, and it, yeah, it definitely comes across quite good live as it, based on the response from our US uh, fans. So we're really looking uh, forward to performing that um, for everyone in Australia. I guess there's a confidence in this album because when you wrote this, you knew that you could actually make this band work as a working band. Yeah, absolutely. I think that it kind of, it was the end of, I guess, a little un- uncertainty with things and also start of, you know, we don't give a shit about problems, like we're still going to make this work. It's kind of, I think it's kind of a defining moment for us. Awesome. Well, you are kicking off in Adelaide on the 9th of February. You're in Melbourne at Max Watts on the 10th. Then you're off to Canberra on the 14th, Newcastle on the 15th, Sydney on the 16th, and Brisbane on the 17th. That's a big weekend, but you can knock it over easy. Um, (laughs) Then the 21st and 22nd, you're over in New Zealand. The 24th, you will be in Perth. Uh, The tickets are available from Wild Things Presents. And you are facebook.com forward slash neoblibiscarus band. Correct. And look up neoblibiscarus on Patreon. And, you know, you guys, you offer something back to to your patrons. It's like a secret little society that people can be part of. And yeah, absolutely. And they can start 
paying in and they can take months off if they can't afford it for some months and then yeah, jump back absolutely. on. And... Absolutely. I mean, it's it's from a dollar onwards. So mm-hmm. you can pay as little as you want and as kind of as much as you want. You can change every month if you want to. You know, different levels uh, within that sort of give you access to uh, – you, know, you can always uh, read about it online at um, patreon.com forward slash navel of Scaris and, um, you, can, you know, you can uh, have a watch through uh, Tim's uh, presentation and – where he talks mm. about it all there as well. So it gives you a little insight. So, um, yeah, mm. any support is really appreciated. Awesome. Thank you so much. It has been great to have a chat with you. And no people worries, should Kat. definitely get hold of this album and go and check you out touring Australia with Circles throughout February. It's going to be an amazing experience with all you guys do on stage. And I guess now you've been touring so much that you probably, your live show has grown a lot too. So people, if they think they've seen you, they probably need to go and see you again. Yeah. So, um, you know, we're, we're continually growing. So it'll be, um, yeah, it's definitely going to be different than the last time, but yeah, we're a lot more, I guess, proficient at what we do now. So it's, but it's an ongoing process. <laughs> awesome. It has uh, been great. Thanks so much. No worries, Kat. Much appreciated. Have a good day. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye-bye.